you guys, let's take this plain stainless steel collapsible straw holder and make it into this. Let's go. All right, what's up you guys? Let's go over the stainless steel collapsible straw kit. It's a nice little kit, comes with everything in it. You choose the color uh, for today's tutorial. I'm gonna choose Citrine AB just because it's such a sunny day here in San Diego and I wanted something a little bit more brighter and fun. So I'll choose this color, but let's go over the contents and see what's inside. Inside, you're gonna have, of course, an awesome uh, starter pickup tool. We call this the Tonto. Tonto is a small dagger for a ninja, so we'll start with that. Normally, it does not come with a syringe and a tip inside, but for this kit, it does. And we have a, a nice fusion tack glue, nice water-based, non-toxic, super easy glue for all skill levels. One of our favorites that we use in tons of stuff. It's very similar to Gem Tack, uh, but we love this glue as well. All right, we have a small uh, nail file for your prep. And of course, the stainless steel straw um, holder. It's a metal, oops, sorry for the squeaking. Um, inside is a straw, and it has also a cleaner that's retractable as well, so you can clean that. And then out is your, your straw that you can carry with you in your purse, on travels, things like that. Save on plastic, not using plastic straws. And it's, um, you can screw that back together. And of course, it's engraved, Crystal Ninja. Nice fun stuff there. And it even has a uh, another part down here you can open up for draining. Uh, has a nice little hole down here if, after you wash everything so everything stays nice and clean. And it, and it comes with um, a key ring and a, a small carabiner that you can attach to your purse or your backpack, anything like that. And then, the col and then also with your prep kit, you get a little um, alcohol wipe that's gonna help us clean in a moment. And then whatever color you choose for your kit, you're gonna get the 10 gross package, 1,440 stones in the color that you choose um, on the site. There's lots of colors to pick from. I'm gonna choose Citrine AB today. It's already from my um, collection here in the office. And we even have a small video to show how we store things. Everything is labeled. Um, on the shelf and then I keep it in the sizes and then everything is nice and labeled. Organization is key. And oh wait, I need that one. Bring it back. Thank you. Let's get to work. All right, let's go here. So we don't need this for right now. And let's go ahead and open up our supplies. So we've got the Tonto and it is made with the same exact synthetic wax that we use for our um, crystal katana tool and also the um, crystal coupaton uh, five United States patents on these tools so that's pretty spectacular and it comes with a sharpener for the Tonto you can sharpen this one down um, it won't last you nearly as long as one katana just because there's a lot less wax here um, synthetic wax and there's no precision um, edge tool but for today we don't need all of that so we're gonna keep this aside and Next, we're gonna go over um, the glue, or unpackage the glue. You can cut this open with scissors. All right, so here we have a tube, and we're gonna show you guys how to glue with a syringe and tip today. We normally do keep our um, water-based glues in precision glue bottles, and they'll look like this. This one's quite old. Um, you'll see it kind of rubbing off there, but all we do is we refill the bottle, um, and there's a little pin. I have a piece of tape on so I don't lose my pin and this stays on our desk and we can just keep refilling it with these tubes it's pretty convenient and it's a very good way to um, apply your glue with the um, fusion tack or the gem tack but today we'll start with the syringe it's always great to know um, practice lots of different um, processes and ways of doing things just to get familiar with the different tools because sometimes you might need to use a glue that needs a syringe and it's great practice because this glue is very forgiving and uh, you won't make a huge mess and if you do it's okay because it's not going to be a um, a super aggressive glue and let me grab oh here's a napkin good always keep a napkin near for this part there we go and let's go let's put some glue in here so when I have a tube glue um, I like to hold it a certain way sometimes an air bubble can get in here if it's been stored upside down and this is good for um, any glue that's in a tube um, if there's an air bubble it might want to burp so I like to have um, my syringe ready to go and then I keep the lid in my two fingers here where so yay there was not a burp or a big bubble coming out and then just a small amount of glue is all you need you don't have to fill this whole thing up especially for this project 
and let's put the lid back on. Now if this um, had an air bubble and it was oozing out the glue, you'd be looking for the lid and possibly get some on your desk or something. Uh, but keeping it in your fingers, it's not going to do that. And then I'm doing this on the horizon. I'm not filling my glue um, up and down where gravity can grab that glue. It'll clog the opening here, even though this glue isn't um, going to run out like that. Some glues do, so it's good practice to stay on the horizon. And press all that air out, and now it's completely ready to go. Let's put this tip on. This is going to be a nice um, small 20 gauge tip. We have lots of sizes. Um, the larger uh, the number, the smaller the hole, the opening, and uh, the, the, the smaller the number, the larger the hole. So if we have a really thick glue, um, you might want to use um, a 16 or an 18 gauge. This is a 20 gauge, and it's great for this amount of glue and for this project. So our glue is ready. We can get rid of this off of our desk, and let's go ahead and start to prep. So um, we like to show people how to sand or file their things. Uh, we, we bring these little nail files because they're just perfect. Uh, the soft ones or the more firm ones are totally fine. Most everyone has a nail file near them, emery board, something like that. And it's great to scuff up the metal. So um, I'll show you real close on camera here, but then I'm going to move off my desk because you don't want to keep getting dust and dander and um, debris onto your work surface. You want to keep this as clean as possible. I see a couple little glitters from yesterday's project, but that's okay. And you can machine wash uh, your work mats if you happen to have one. Uh, we highly recommend a neoprene uh, surface. Um, and so let's get to sanding. So I'm going to just give it a little scratching here. Um, and you may see the scratches. You may not. Let's see if I can get... And I'm going to go ahead and... Um, cover that name but give it a nice good scratching and that way you'll be able to see those um, sanding marks one moment I'll go off the desk and I'll come right back okay so there is a slight texture already on here so the little sanding marks are kind of hard to see with the light of the camera um, but it's there and so now we give you an alcohol wipe this just lets you clean everything get in the habit of keeping everything super clean um, that's going to help your glue stick better and you want to get all that sanding debris off of your item. So give it a nice quick bath in the rubbing alcohol and let's get ready to glue. All right, so once we start to glue, I'm going to keep everything um, attached. You can unscrew these just a hair to see the seam. Make sure you don't glue these uh, seams shut. And um, let's put a little bit of glue around. We're going to go around the seam here and then come down this way. We're going to use um, a honeycomb fill method. It's one size only. It's going, to go, it's going to go all the way around and you won't need any fillers except for I might want some fillers around here if I decide to leave that open. So let's see what's going to happen when I get there. Let's go ahead and pour out a good amount of your rhinestones. And the reason why we have um, work mats, neoprene work mats, is they make a nice firm but soft surface for your pickup tool um, to grab the stones. With any of our tools, um, the black side is the synthetic wax. It's the pickup side. You want to touch that side, bring it to the glue. The glue is always more sticky than the tip of this tool, and then the glue will release that. Um, it's very simple, pick up in place. It's very repetitive and um, let's get started. So I like to have a napkin near so that I can uh, see how much glue is gonna come out with how I press it. So a good way to hold your syringe is in your fist. Let me zoom back out. There we go. Um, if you wanna hold it like a nurse, that's wonderful. I love nurses, I married one. Uh, but there's zero control on getting this material out, which is what um, a nurse would want to do. They want to get all of that material out as fast as possible. That's not what we want. We want to control the glue. So three fingers over the barrel, one finger over the plunger, the thumb and the index finger work together to control how much glue is going to come out. So you've already hit that there because there was no control. So over on your napkin, always practice and press. Just barely press and enough glue is going to come out. And But because your index finger is holding that plunger, uh, you won't press too much. So let's go ahead and put a small, very small line of glue around this edge. Don't go directly on that seam or you could chance gluing it shut. 
And if you're just starting out, um, don't put too much glue and stay away from that seam. Gentle touch is all you need. Touch that glue. Sometimes um, you might want to roll, roll your tool off of the stone. It might help it release if your glue is super wet or if you're in a cold environment. It takes a lot longer for glues to start to get sticky. And if you have um, glue kind of oozing, let's see if that'll show it up. It's going to dry clear and that's totally fine, especially if it's your first time. If you have a darker color, you may want to colorize the whole um, straw container with a Sharpie marker because it will look a lot nicer um, on these edges. But for the most part, a lighter color is just fine. Let's go around. There we go. Get my fingers back in the better grip. I'm barely pressing on this syringe. And then every time I put the glue on the item, um, I'm going to want to pull back on that plunger. So I kind of move my thumb um, outways and pull back on that plunger just a hair. You don't want to invite tons of air into your syringe by pulling too much. Um, but this way the glue doesn't keep coming out. And then I always wipe it um, every time to keep it nice and clean this whole time that you're going to be gluing. And then these need to be super straight around the tube and touching if possible. We might need a little spacing as we kind of come around to the front part to connect them. But once you get that down, the rest of it is going to be a breeze. And it looks like my spacing was pretty good. So that's awesome. And if this row is not straight, your next row won't be straight. So you've got to watch out how everything is nice and straight. This glue is very forgiving. You'll be able to move something if, if something's not in the right spot. So now let's go in for the second row. And once you get your second and third row in, it's going to be a breeze for the rest of it. And you can do lines of glue like this, or you can totally come in and do dots of glue. Dots of glue are technically um, a lot better. It's less glue. You'll have a lot less glue oozing out, um, but for sometimes for speed, doing a line of glue can be a little easier, a little faster. But it's it's really up to your, pre your preference. If you get any glue onto the tip of your tool, please wipe it off onto your napkin to keep that nice and clean, or you can continue to get glue onto the other stones and keep contaminating um, your other items with glue residue. Give it a twist if it doesn't want to release, and then continue. So my lines were both nice and straight, so that lets me know my honeycomb fill is going to be fine all the way down. You want to stay within that pattern. All right, so far it's looking good. Everything is super straight. Everything is fitting in all of its little um, shapes, making a proper honeycomb. And even though this isn't in the kit, I wanted to show another way you can kind of upgrade um, and maybe frame something out that's in your design. So I'll show you that using a different color, kind of a contrasting color. One of my favorites is Light Amethyst AB. So it's gonna give you some pink, it's gonna give you some blue, and I've got quite a few sizes. I'm gonna use the eights to merge in the honeycomb as we go, and then some smaller stones for fillers. So let's see if I can frame this out just to show you on your next one what you could try. Let's add a little more glue. And I might add one more citrine AB to each side of this. And then let's do Oops, I got all three stones right there. Perfect. So that worked out perfect that um, the lasered logo is actually in the center of that stone. That was pure luck. I did not measure this ahead of time. Um, so hooray. So I'm going to frame this out, making it a nice straight line. And then we're going to backfill on... Um, the edges there. And then now we're going to keep 
coming back around with the citrine and then I'll probably need like an SS6 uh, for a filler. So definitely invest in getting some filler stones. Normally for this project you wouldn't need any fillers but I'm just trying to show you guys another way that you can kind of accent things and frame them out. So it's like a, like, it's like a bonus, like a bonus class within one class. So I've got some citrine AB size sixes and so I probably won't need the light amethyst in the filler stones because the way that I went with this straight line here. So let's just put a few there to get them ready. And then we can move the light amethyst over. I have a habit of putting my hand in too many stones. Okay, here we go. Let's continue um, just doing this fill back here and then we'll have to come, come all the way around to connect that line. Okay, so for this next row, we're probably going to need a filler stone, which just means a smaller stone to fill the weird kind of gap it's going to leave. Um, so let's go ahead and put in um, the back line. I'm going to leave two stones and then come in to show you the filler part. That way we can do it twice. Now that we have the camera or the project on the front of the camera, let's put in enough glue to get these little things filled in and let's see what it's going to need. Put in an 8, SS8, one more and then there's a slight gap. This SS6 is slightly too large so I'm going to put it back down. I'm going to pull out don't get the glue on the end of your Tonto. Put that on your napkin. Wipe in case you got glue on it. And let's put in two sixes. And I just bet that's going to fit a little nicer. And it does. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Continue with the eights. But leave room for two SS sixes. They should fit nice and flat. Please don't leave any space or we call them um, piggybacks or floaters when stones are overlapping. So try not to do any of that. Um, and that's going to help fill this area with smaller stones. Meanwhile, keeping your nice um, honeycomb pattern that all this needs to be. So let's continue. Okay, so as I come around, this one only needed, it didn't need any fillers, so it's perfectly SS8 all the way around. Come around the back side, let's finish this line because every other row will need a filler, but every other row will not. And that's the fun part about using a honeycomb pattern, is every other row should be a bit different. Super. And then make sure your lines of your stones are still nice and straight. You shouldn't see any wonky hanging out stones or else your honeycomb pattern will not fit. So now this next row, we're going to use the two small size sixes and then continue with the eights. Right, so we've got one SS6 and another SS6. There we go. And it looks like it's leaning a little too high, so I'm going to move it back down. You want to keep them straight as possible. Um, you don't want to cram them up in a gap if you can, because then that's going to, the top table of the facets is going to um, stand out. So you want to keep all of those perfectly aligned, even though you could smush that one up higher or something. You want to make it nice and straight, so pull that back down. Oh, I need the two, two smaller. So we got one. Oh, yes, that's right and the second one. Perfect. And then we just keep on going. This next one won't need a filler stone, so keep with your stone size 8, SS8. Okay, 
Okay, so I removed some glue. I've, I had my other camera on and realized I need to show you guys how I um, fit that in. So I removed the glue, but now I'm going to show you how I'm going to close that in. Um, just following that same line. So what we have to do is we kind of need to find the line back here to make sure it matches up perfectly and not uh, go sideways. Because sometimes these can go off just a minute of a millimeter and it just messes everything up. So I like to find the back side and make that line super straight and that way we don't have that problem. So let's start from the back and then we're going to put one more citrine AB even though it's kind of above that uh, light amethyst AB and then the next line okay so when you come to the end and you want to continue that border I was in the groove so I kept working so I'm gonna take out these five stones which is my craft knife and you can um, easily clean up this glue with a little bit of, of alcohol so let's do that so here's because sometimes you got to take stones out so here's a pretty good way to do it um, you want to put your knife towards the outside not towards the design you might scratch this part so let's just pop these off they did not cure yet so that's a good thing so one two three four five and we'll just take those off place them on your napkin and then now I've got a paper towel with rubbing alcohol to get that glue residue off that's down in this area you can lightly wipe it you want to be very careful to not get um, wet rubbing alcohol on the rest of this or wiping the rest of this because you can get um, glue onto another part of the stone so you don't want to do that you want to keep it super clean sometimes we even wait wait till it's dry and then we just kind of scrape off that glue residue with the craft knife the exacto knife um, for a better result but I didn't want to have too much glue build up in this area because it's kind of the frame of where you'll see. So it's just the edge of a paper towel. That's plenty. And then now we can continue uh, framing out this light amethyst AB uh, because I ran my connecting line all the way around the back side to make sure that it was super straight. So let's go ahead and put those guys back in. And light amethyst. A, B. So one more down the line. And then we're going to um, wipe that was a bit too much glue and yes it will dry clear but I just don't want it puddling between these guys because this is kind of the edge and that worked out pretty good there's a little bit of space here compared to over here but um, for you know not measuring it worked out pretty good now this line these lines of stones need to be super straight need to be super straight or else your next honeycomb line will not um, look as attractive it will not be straight so this glue residue I'll show you guys how to cut that out a little bit later every stone is nice and flat onto the surface of your canvas perfect all right so now I'll continue my next line and everything is going to connect perfectly I've let uh, this dry for about an hour and I like to show how sometimes we remove the excess glue I could scrub it with the rubbing alcohol um, but it might loosen up stuff other glue under here that's still trying to cure so I really don't want to upset that um, that fresh or that original glue so, but taking your craft knife, your X-Acto blade, you can gently kind of pick the glue right off before it's cured. 
and that's going to help you clean this area up without disturbing any of the other glue and without scratching it. You don't want to dig into the metal, you don't want to scrape across anything. You're just trying to get a little bit of that glue off and kind of pull that right out. All right, so now we've got one row left to go before we hit this little seam. So you don't want to go too close to that, but we're going to leave that lid on there, that cap on there, and just put a little bit more glue to finish out. And then we're going to match the way the crystals will be on the other side of the seam to have a what will look like a seamless honeycomb pattern. All right, so you can double check by unscrewing the cap or um, leaving it, I'm gonna leave mine all the way because I really want to set um, my stone to, to follow in the honeycomb. And those gaps, so I want it to be straight across in those gaps, so screw it on tightly first. And without gluing the seam shut, And add a few stones to find that position. Get it super close to the edge, making sure that all the stones line up as if they were still in that honeycomb. So they need to find in that little divot, that little dip. But if you want to now open up to get some space going, you can. It's gonna make it a little wobbly, uh, but just don't get the glue in the seam. Don't glue your seam shut. And now the honeycomb is off because I've unscrewed that, so it's okay. Just make sure you follow this spacing all the way around. And then you can push it back together. Make sure that where we started, that's good, that's good, this one, was a little bit loose right there, so let's move it up. Make sure these are directly to where the honeycomb pattern would end up being. Whoops, that one was a little bit off. Move it back up. And if you wanna let that dry for a moment, you, you sure can. But I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna leave mine closed. I can see that I did not glue it shut, so I'm gonna keep going. And there you have it. Now the spacing down here is so small, I wouldn't bother putting another row of stones even if you were to put the smaller sixes at an angle uh, because this is gonna hit things in your purse or hang on your bag so you wanna give it um, some space. It's okay that it lined up just like that. We're gonna leave that alone. And once it dries, I'll clean this glue and make that a little bit nicer. A little more tidy right there. But other than that, this looks pretty good. And um, we're gonna also let that dry so that we can work uh, down here and finish this off. Bottom is nice and dry. Nothing is glued shut. And my honeycomb pattern lines up perfectly all the way around. So now let's do the same thing. There's a seam right here. So let's check that, untwist it a bit, put it back. <clears throat> and continue gluing. And make sure your stones are fitting in to that V shape or that little um, divot that the other row has and that will continue your honeycomb pattern. As close as you can, make it as straight as possible and then continue on to the next row and then you can check it by unscrewing it and putting it back. Okay, last line going in. I've already applied the glue. So let's place the last few stones. The distance is actually perfect. I'm super happy with using SS8s on this project because it really allows you to um, start and finish in a pretty good spot. I took off the little key ring um, a second ago because it was going to be hitting this area. So sometimes you can help 
with accessories kind of on or off, but sometimes you can't. So if I could not have taken that off, I would have wrapped it with tape or something to help it uh, not get into the glue and adjust the stones. Let's put a little bit more glue there. Oh yeah, and I also added the super cute accent line of the Light Amethyst AB just because I could. So have fun with it, you know? It's good to do the project just to get technique down, but um, once you start getting your technique down, go ahead and start throwing in some design. Get some color. All right, so we'll let that dry and this will be finished. And it's super cute and I'm super happy with it. So I hope you've enjoyed this project. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And um, I can't wait to see your guys' project. All right, have a great one. Stay sparkly.